So uh, uh, hello to everybody who's watching on screen, wherever you are around the world. Welcome to Prescott, where we are going to have a, a, a weekend of top class hill climbing because it's rounds 23 and 24 of the British Hill Climb Championship, which is a very closely matched uh, competition this year. Um, and we'll tell you more about the positions in the championship a bit later on. Uh, Prescott, you probably know, is in a beautiful part of England called the Cotswold, Cotswold Hills, nestles in a fold in the hills, and um, it's lovely countryside. It's a beautiful place to visit. So if you're watching this from somewhere overseas and are planning a holiday in the UK, try and uh, include a visit to this lovely hill climb. What we've got today, Saturday, is... Um, practice runs for all the competitors in the British Hill Climb Championship and the Midlands uh, Championship and the British Hill Climb Cup. So those guys get uh, a couple of runs today in practice for the competition tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow morning, uh, competitors in the Hill Climb Championship who want to can have a, a third practice run just in case conditions have, f have changed overnight the moment we're blessed with lovely blue sky clouds are building up a bit but it's warm and uh, there isn't any sign of rain in fact the forecast for this week weekend is great it's lovely to see more and more people coming here in person to watch this lovely sport um, after the 18 months of the horrible covid nonsense that we've been putting up with let me quickly before cars come up the hill describe the hill to you and we'll we'll see the cameras pointing to various parts there is the start line with the exit from the paddock behind the hut on the right the avon hut on the right they come out and cars stop at the pre-start line which is the second white line beyond uh, the start where they are permitted to uh, warm up their driven wheel tires get some heat into the tires get the tires nice and clean and then after the pre-start line they trundle up to the starting line, which you can see where the orange clad marshals are. There's a red and green light on its tripod, which you can see. And unlike drag racing, where you need to have very quick reactions to go as soon as the green light comes on, in hill climbing, the light turns green and you've got a few seconds in which to gather your thoughts, put the car in first gear and zoom off the line. Then uh, you'll then, see that uh, we've got a timing beam at 64 feet, feet and there may be three people in the world who don't know the relevance of the 64 foot time. The significance is that two seconds from the start line to 64 feet relates to one force of gravity, one G of acceleration, as if you've jumped off a diving board. Um, and uh, times under two seconds are signify a really good start. I think the fastest I've ever seen is 1.58. It's not dragster sort of acceleration, but it's still pretty quick. And uh, beyond the 64-foot beam, you can see the bridge, which leads into Orchard Bend. And uh, just after the bridge, we've got an, another speed trap. And Orchard is a lovely sweeping left-hand bend. You can see the, now on the screen the direction the cars go. And Sterling Moss used to say it's one of his favorite bends in the whole world. It's quite a challenging, fast left-hand sweeper. And uh, our quickest cars are doing around 120 miles an hour, up to about 120 miles an hour, uh, when they go through the beam. In fact, they are still accelerating when they leave the beam. So although we might uh, record 110, 115 uh, on the timing beam, on the speed trap, actually they are probably doing 120 on the way into Orchard. And then it's up the relatively new part of the, of the hill, which was created in 1959, up to uh, a right-hand hairpin called a Teoris. In the early days, cars used to turn sharp right where those two bollards are, what is known as the short course. And in, indeed, nowadays, when the Vintage Sports Car Club come here for their big meeting in August, they still take the original short course. But today, we're going to go zooming around Orchard and up to uh, heavy braking for Etoris, 
right hand hairpin and sometimes people get their braking wrong and uh, end up in the kitty litter but um, I guess we can soon see have a look at Etori's which um, it's difficult to get right actually it's quite a tricky bend because after Etori's there's a downhill a little downhill burst and uh, the cars have a very sh short straight part up to Pardon hairpin which is a left hand hairpin and I'm sure here we are this is Pardon as you can see slightly uphill and very sharp left and if you get your braking wrong you can go sailing through the kitty litter which you hope will stop you before you get to the rectocell the barrier uh, at the end of the kitty litter the um, gravel on the outside of Pardon after Pardon it's accelerate hard along the top which some people say is a straight but it's not it's a sweeping left hand then a right hand a very fast bends into the no notorious S's and lots of excitement happens at the S's which is heavy braking for a left right left uh, S series of S bends the last of which is known as Tom Rote Corner celebrating the great uh, author and uh, passionate vintage car man and passionate steam enthusiast um, who wrote lots of books about hill climbing about steam and uh, about the canals because Tom was a leading light in the resurrection of the canal system in this country which fell into terrible disrepair uh, before and during World War II and it, we owe a lot to Tom people who have a, a narrow boat and have lovely holidays on our fantastic network of canals out of Tom Roke corner is another burst of acceleration straight ahead up to the semicircle and the semicircle is 180 degrees round to the right with a drop off uh, on the outside of it which seems a bit daunting and you think crikey I'm gonna go off the edge of a cliff but actually it's quite a, a gentle slope and most people who go off um, at semicircle and people do um, don't suffer any great harm to themselves or to the car and then it's a quick burst up to the finishing line and we have a, a return road which is a sharp left turn after the finishing line back to the paddock so unlike other hill climbs we don't we 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 have a return road so we don't see the co competition cars coming back down the hill we've got our first class on the hill and these are competitors in the Ferrari owners club championship sponsored by Pirelli and on the line is John Swift a leading light in this championship in his 355 Berlinetta they have a fairly complex handicap system based on the age of the car called a PEP factor performance equalizer percentage and the 355 is a car that's on zero the older cars get a minor percentage and the faster cars the newer cars have a, a positive rating so for example a, three, a 458 Italia has a plus 4.5 percent handicap on the line is number 301 but on the screen is John Swift heading around pardon and uh, swerving left swerving right and then heavy braking into the S's luckily the S's are dry often when it rains they're the last part of the uh, hill to dry out and you can have quite a few people who get it wrong in the S's and clang into the arm so John setting our Ferrari time of 58.33 he's followed by Richard Priest in a 360 Modena bit quicker off the line and a bit faster under bridge at 64 miles an hour and hustling the car into Etoris. Lost him but we'll find him again. I think we might have a bit of trouble with our Etoris camera but here he is Ian, is Richard I think his boss, rounding Pardon quite safely and disappearing into the S's, rounding the S's. I think this will be a, a quicker time than John Swift's 58.33 he's into the semicircle and he's followed by this lovely F430 of 
John Kennedy. In the meantime, Richard Priest has recorded a 52-7-4. John Kennedy in the F430, 4.3 litre big front engine Ferrari. Earlier ones had the V12 and later ones the V8 uh, supercharged. This is 4.3, 4.5 litres, so I'm not sure if it's V12. I think it's V8 turbocharged. Time 51.45. Pauline Goodwin. Is in currently in second place in the championship in this venerable 328 GTB. First of the rear engine V8 Ferraris, the, three the 328, well, the 308 was the first one, 328 came. And the early ones had fiberglass bodies, the later ones had uh, steel bodies. But Pauline chucking her 328 up the hill on the line is a 360 spider which will be facing a plus handicap so Pauline has a minus 3.5 percent uh, handicap advantage but she's still pretty quick but not quite as quick as the V8 cars in front of her 56.67 for Pauline here's Mark Wibberley in the 360 Spider, always amuses me that uh, the Italians call it a drop top a spider. I don't know whether it means speeder. I don't think it means um, arachnid. Insect. So Mark safely run pardon. Time to beat currently is a 51.45. John Kennedy. I don't think Mark is going to match that. It'll be in the 53s, I think. 53.49. Here's our leader of the championship, David Snelson, in his S430. Again, 4.3 litre V8 in the back of the car. Five valves per cylinder. And. Uh, immense capacity for revs, they can rev to eight or nine thousand revs, making a lovely noise as they do so. This might be our quickest Ferrari so far. Can he beat the 5145 of John Kennedy? I think he pro probably can. Heads from 59, yes, yeah, under 50, that's good. 4943 for David Snelson. So he probably consolidates his lead in the championship. On the line, Nick Taylor, a 3.4 litre, slightly earlier, 4.30 coupe. Some of them have a stick shift and some have paddle gears. This one, I think, I noticed uh, Nick's uh, left leg uh, lifting as he engaged the clutch. So I'm pretty sure this is a uh, stick shift. Nice line through it tories and hugs the inside curb at the park. Races into and through road corner. He had to lift off a bit in the left hander. So this probably will be in the 50, 50 to 51. In the meantime, Brian Jackson is on the screen in an earlier car, the 308 GTB, three liter V8 in the back. 48.65 for Nick Taylor, that's a good time. That's our quickest Ferrari so far. What can Brian Jackson do? He has the advantage of a, of a minus handicap. Such elegant cars. Date, what do they date from? The uh, early 70s, I think. So they carry their age extremely well. They're such elegant cars. 308s and 328s. They hold their value, of course. 54.89 for Brian, followed by Martin Jones in a 360. 3.6 litres. Again, five valves. 
think that means three inlet, three inlet and two exhaust, but I'm, it's quite possible that I'm wrong. This, I think, is a fairly leisurely run by Martin. And he's our last Ferrari runner. So, on scratch, it looks as if Nick Taylor takes the top spot. In the meantime, Martin Jones finishes with a 62.17. We go back a bit to uh, Ian Beatty in the MR2. Number 292. So he's leading the New Barn runners which is for drivers with an inter-club license, what we used to call a B license. And Ian Beatty finishes with a 56.94 in the MR2. He's followed by Colin Davis's Ford Fiesta ST2. Favorite hot hatch for lots of people, particularly lots of journalists who write the road tests. They love the uh, Fiesta Sport. So we, we are into the New Barn Championship. New Barn are a Cheltenham based specialist in uh, Land Rovers and Range Rovers, and they sponsor this class, which is organized by the, the championship, is organized by the Pigetti Owners Club and it's for people with a, an inter-club license. If you want to upgrade from an inter-club license to a national license, you need to, to compete successfully in six events and get six signatures from the clerk of the course. So the time for the Fiesta was 57.68. Here's Richard Godwin in the little mini Cooper S Auto. So is it a drop top? Yes, I think it is. With an automatic gearbox, so not the first car you would consider for hill climbing, but uh, one of the first cars you'd consider for having a lot of fun. He's heading for the finish. He's followed by James Fletcher. We've got Richard Godwin's time of 58.29. James Fletcher in this very rapid little Abarth 500 SS with its 1.4 litre multi air engine. And it's a rapid little car, the Abarth SS. Some of the, I think the SS only has two seats, so it's a, it's a luggage space and a roll cage behind the driver and passenger. He's followed by Stephen Cooper in a rare Porsche 924. There are lots of 924s, but the 924 Turbo was pretty rare and pretty quick as well, just before the 944 came along. The Abarth has finished with a time of 54.36. Let's see what sort of time Stephen does in the Porsche. The 94 engine developed from an Audi engine, none the worse for that, and renowned for excellent road holding, particularly when the 968 came out. He's over the line in 53.78. He's followed by Dominic Moreland in a 1600cc Caterham Super Sport. Caterham, of course, the successor to the famous Lotus 7. So, in fact, the Lotus 7 and the Caterham 7 have been in production crumbs since the late 50s. And still going strong. And with plans for what they're going to do when uh, internal combustion cars are no longer permitted. He's rounding S's and coming to the finish. He's followed by John Brunner in this G20 Ginetta. Which I think stems from the early days when the Ginetta was run by the Walkland brothers in Essex. Great success, but um, Ginetta had even more success in recent years with the various race championships they run. 
Dominic Moreland's time, 56.46. John Brunnan is in the uh, finish. He's around road corner. And off the line is Mike Tower in a BMW Z4. We'll see going through the speed trap at Bridge. Meanwhile, John Brunner, Janetta, 56.01. 56.01. Leading the championship at the moment is Ian Beattie in the MR2, who went up the hill in what was his time? 56.94. But here's the Z4 of Mike Tower, two litre version. I think you could get the Z4 up to 2.8, six cylinder, but the four cylinder, two litre version, of course, had a much lighter engine in the front. So, from a handling point, probably a bit more handy. TR4. TR4A, in fact, of Richard Durrant. The last of the four-cylinder TR Triumph sports cars. They were followed by the TR5, which had the six-cylinder two-liter engine. TR4 engine developed from the engine of the standard Vanguard, the Ferguson tractor, it's a good, strong engine, and uh, TRs of various ages did pretty well at Le Mans in their period. Mike Tower has finished with a 60.46. That was in the Z4. And Richard Durrant has finished with a 62.05. Here's another Cooper S. George Tower. There must be a relation. And he's uh, into the S's. Good fun cars, Mini Cooper S's. Very nippy, not much room in the back. But that's not what you buy them for. Here's a an earlier 924 of Andrew Meredith. George has finished with a 5715 in the Cooper S. Andrew in the non turbocharged Porsche 924. up to semicircle, leaving the start is Rob Gutteridge, we'll see him in a second, who won an award for uh, last year's championship, here he comes in the MX-5, and the 924 of Andrew Meredith has finished with a 58.71. Here's Rob taking a nice line, late apex at uh, Ed Torres, little downhill squirt and then up to left-hand hairpin at par. I think it's a detachable hard top rather than a folding one in uh, that era of MX-5. We keep saying this, but the world's largest production sports car ever. Inspired, we always say, by the Lotus Elan, and I think that's right. Here's another one in the hands of Noah War. Slightly smaller capacity. Car from 2003. MX-5 first appeared, I think, in 1989 in this country. And was called, in America, wasn't it called the UNOS? We never got that name. We've got a time for Rob Gutteridge of He's followed by John White in a slightly newer MX-5 from 2008 with a two-liter engine. Usually cars as they develop get heavier and heavier, but it's great to see that the latest MX-5, which got rave reviews from all the road testers, is lighter than its predecessor. Time for Noel War in the MX-5 59.22. So he'll be happy to be under the 60 second mark. And we'll see in a second or two what uh, John White does in his two litre version. 
In the meantime, he's followed by this nice little Alfa Romeo Spider, two litre twin spark Spider, front wheel drive, of course. And these, the, the ones that remain, quite the early ones, a lot of them got uh, rusted through and got chucked on the skip, but um, those that are in good condition now are being much appreciated. I wouldn't say they're classic cars, but they will be pretty soon. Meanwhile, Elan in the hands of David Rose. Nice hard top Elan from 1963. Famous Lotus Elan with its backbone chassis and the Lotus Four twin cam engine was the successor to the all fiberglass Lotus Elite which was a very beautiful car, but um, technically a bit temperamental and had the Climax engine. So the Elan was the first Lotus to sport the twin cam Ford engine. Another X, MX-5 early one. It's in the hands of Ian Winnie. David Rose in the Elan's time was a quick time of 52.49. That's good. You're watching on the screen, you'll have a treat in a second. But we're, meanwhile, we watch Ian Winnie in the MX5 Mark 1 in Reg. That's early. Now, look at this. This is the lovely Alfa Romeo 4C in the hands of Will Goff. Unfortunately, no longer being produced. Really was introduced as competition for the Lotus Evora and uh, maybe the Porsche Cayman as well. Really never sold as well as it should have done. It was handicapped in the early days by rather wayward handling, which actually was easily cured by a change of uh, front suspension angle. And we never understood why Alpha didn't do that themselves. But Will Goff heads for the finish. Ian Winner, in the meantime, in the early MX5 59.01, and Will has finished with a 54. Point one eight. So quickest on scratch so far has been David Rose in the Milan. He's followed by Tim Stokes in this little dinky little Suzuki Sport 1600. Again, one of the favourite hot hatches, warm hatch actually, as I guess you'd say. But uh, renowned for good handling and, of course, famous for Japanese reliability. Will Goff in the Alpha, his time was a 54.18. Tim Stokes has finished with a 58.73 in the Suzuki. David Keeling follows him in the 2 litre Vauxhall card, Westfield 7. Now, can he potentially could be quicker than David Rose in the Elan? Slight oversteery twitch out of Tom Rock corner, but no harm done. And he's followed by the journalist's favourite hot hatch, the Renault Clio, in two-litre form. David Keeling, not quite as quick as David Rose in the Elan, 53.49. So we're watching Stephen Sims. Safely round at Tories. And following him is Martin Rawson in the Mark III version of the Toyota MR2. That's a little, little mid-engined one open top with enough luggage room for a toothpaste for a toothpaste tube and a toothbrush probably not much more but uh, a great fun car could be had could be had with uh, automatic transmission and I think uh, so well in this country and I think as many were automatic as manual rarer is the Honda CRX little 1600 front wheel drive Honda not many of these left, and it's such a shame that Honda 
have stopped producing cars down in Sweden. We've got a time for Martin Rawson of 60.15. Meanwhile, here's the CRX. In Matthew Gregory's hands, 54.47. That's a very good time for that car. Now, Ford Puma with a 1700cc engine in the hands of Adrian Burrows, number 284. This is the earlier Ford Puma. There's a there's a recently introduced Ford Puma, which is which is a, a mini SUV, but again, is selling like hot cakes. Round under the bridge, another MX-5 in the hands of Sean West. Quite a oh. yeah, MX-5 standard is a fairly modern one. It's from uh, 2010. And Adrian Burrows has finished with 58.61 in the Ford Puma. So here's Sean West. Slides it through Tom Rowe corner. And hugs the inside curb at semicircle and records a very good time at 53.15. What can the earlier 1800 version do in the hands of Steve Perry? I think it's quite modified. It's got a roll cage. Looks as if the su suspension has been lowered, so maybe a bit more power than standard as well. Kicking up the dust out of pardon hustles it through the S's using every inch of the road out, so out of the S's and into semicircle. Porsche Cayman for many people the prettiest of the current crop of Porsches with the mid-engine rather than the uh, outboard rear engine of the 911 or the front engine of the Panamera Cayman Effectively, the hardtop version of the Ford, of the VW, of uh, sorry, of the Porsche Boxster. Most of them with the 3.4 litre six-cylinder flat-six engine. But then they produced the version with the four-cylinder engine, which in many ways was better. It was quicker and more economical, but lots of people didn't like the noise it made. The Cayman is followed by Zoe Sherman in the MR2. Now Zoe must have been fluttering her eyelashes at the handicap, handicappers because at Prescott last time she beat her handicap by three and a half seconds. So I suspect that she's facing a much tougher handicap now. Alan McFarlane has finished with a quick time of 53.48. He was in the Cayman of course. Here's the RDTT of Paul Renison, who was the overall champion in this class last year. So this is a very quick RDTT with a very quick driver. And he's followed by James Dockery. And James is only two points behind Ian Beatty for the low lead in this championship this year. So we've got the Audi finishing with a time of 54.04 and James Dockery here he comes in the Pearson Subaru STI flat 4 turbocharged 4 wheel drive you can see in the 64 foot time the advantage of 4 wheel drive 2.2 off the line for James is, and at time in the 40s a 49.01 that's brilliant so I'm not sure whether on handicap he nudges ahead of Ian Beatty in the championship. He was, at the end of the last meeting, only two points behind him. Sarah De uh, Ian Beatty, here he is in the MR2. So Ian is leading the championship at the moment on 115 points. But we won't know from the scratch times whether he's been nudged 
into second place by James Dockery. In third is Paul Renison in the Audi TT, who won the overall event last year, but he's, he's in there pitching this year, although he's, he is uh, 20 points or so behind Ian Beattie. Now, what can Ian do? Has he finished? He has. He's finished with a 56.82. With us is Sarah Davis in another ST2. She's sharing the car with the first runner of this class, Colin Davis. And she finishes with a 57.87. So those are our runners having their first competition runs for the New Barn Interclub License Championship and they get another run this afternoon to uh, finalize their positions after this round which will be round nine of the championship and they have in fact 11 rounds in all and they if they've done more than six rounds only their best six get counted, so they have to drop scores. So we won't know who's won until the very last meeting in October. Yeah, please do send in your comments and questions. They'll appear on screen. We'll read them out if we can, and we'll try and answer them if they are questions. But we do welcome, we do welcome comments, particularly if they're complimentary, but if they're not complimentary. Happy birthday to John Maycock in uh, MX5 number 47. Well, I wonder how John will celebrate his birthday. He's actually lining up to take his first, uh, his second practice run. They had a run this morning. Who's commentator? Well, that's me. Gentleman. No, that's your first mistake. I'm not a gentleman. Um, Chris Druid. That's me. And it's a, you're right, Simon. It is a lovely day. What's the fastest time ever on the course? Well, the fastest time ever is a 35.41 in the hands of Sean Gould, who is here defending his record uh, tomorrow. And in fact, tomorrow we, we've got um, the three people who all broke the Chelsea Walsh outright record at the last meeting there couple of weeks ago we had the record broken three times in three minutes that was um, Scott Moran Alex Summers and Sean Gould Sean broke the record here last September 35-4-1 and he's determined that it uh, won't be snatched away from him this weekend although in current conditions it is pretty much perfect for record breaking. So as well as the British Hill Climb Championship uh, being run this weekend, we've got the Midland Hill Climb Championship, which is slightly different in that it uh, depends on your position in the class. And so you win, you score points in your own class, which means that very often the Midlands Championship is won not by one of the fastest cars. It could be uh, a Mini, it could be a Caterham, but it really hinges on the quickest driver in their class. And we are heading for our Class A, which is serious production saloons and sports cars up to two litres and a lot of them are competing in the Midlands Hill Climb Championship, one or two in the British Hill Climb Championship Cup as well and we're kicked off by a Renault Clio 172 and I can see the cars lined up at the exit to the paddock so we'll very quickly, very shortly be in business. In the meantime, we've got our clerk of the course. Clerk to the course. 
this weekend are David Wickham, Diana Mapham, and Andrew Tung, and they're all uh, officiating. And it gives me a chance to, uh, as always, to say a big thank you to our marshals. Doing a great job, rain or shine, or snow, and uh, without marshals, we wouldn't have competition. So it's great that they give up their time, but it's also a great way of getting to getting close to the action in motorsport. And they're always looking for new people to join them. But uh, coming up to the line is Ben Cross, kicking off our second practice runs for competitors in the British and Midland Championships. And this is class A1 for serious production saloons and sports cars up to two litres. And the record is held by Michael Thompson in a Honda S2000 with a 48.85. Ben's Renault is a fairly early one. It's from uh, 2001. So it's a 172 and they went on to have one 192s, 197s, as gradually the engines got bigger and more powerful. He's under the bridge at 57 miles an hour, sweeps up through Orchard. Brakes heavily to make the correct late apex at Ettores. Accelerates down the hill and swoops up into Pardon. Line, we've got another one in the hands of David Garnett. We'll see very shortly. Meanwhile, Ben is into and through the S's. And really, if you get a time in the 40s, you're doing pretty well. Ben has finished, but his in the mid-50s with a 55-3-6. David Garnett, I think, will be quicker than that taking a fairly wide line around Pardon. Lots of debate about the best line to take through Pardon. Great hill climber Roy Lane used to say a meter in from the inside curb, but it's a matter of choice. What you don't want to do is go too wide and go into the ground. Now, can David Garnett get under the 50 seconds? No, I don't think so. It'll be in the low 50s. In his Clio, 54.17. Off the line goes David Wilson in this 1.9 Peugeot 205 regarded as really the hottest of the hot hatches not many of them left in good condition those that are values are rocketing up they were great fun to drive they were very nippy they also needed great care particularly in the wet a lot of them went backwards through the hedge um, if they went into a corner a bit too quickly on the wet track so now David Wilson, can he get under the 50 second mark? I think he might just, clock's ticking away, but is it, no, it's a 50.51. Great time though for David. Another Renault, this is the 197, so this is still two liters, but more power. This is a quick car. David Garnett, 5417 was the quickest Clio so far. Again, wide line, using every inch of the road out of road corner. How to get on at semicircle, six inches from the curb is fine. And over the line to record a 51.86. So the quickest Clio so far. He's followed by an earlier one, x red in the hands of Robert Marwood and he's back to 172 horses so not as quick as the 197 but he's hustling it through the S's nicely I think this will be quite a quick run considering the power of the car can he get under the 50 mark? he can, 49.3 for Robert that's a great time MX-5, yet another MX-5 this one with a rather faded bonnet. It's been out of the sun too much. In the hands of Sebastian Cartwright. 
money is being spent on the mechanics rather than on polish. That's Sebastian Cartwright. And he's followed by an interesting car. We'll see in a few seconds. Watch Stephen as he heads towards the finish. He's followed by Tom Mogirossi in the Renault Twingo. I don't think this version of the Twingo was ever imported into this country officially, but this one looks nice in Alpine colors rather like the famous Alpine sports car and of course the, um, the F1 cars which are competing of course this weekend at Zandvoort in Holland. So the Twingo is following Sebastian Cartwright's MX-5 who compl completed his climb in 57.35. Watch Tom in the Twingo through the S's neat little car. The later Twingo after this was rear-engined and I don't think that one was ever imported into this country. Following him is James Robinson in another 197 Clio RS. Half a version. Tom in the in the Twingo 57.45. And here's the Clio RS of James Robinson on the screen. Meanwhile, James Kerr in a two-liter Peugeot 205 1.9 is rushing around Orchard at 67 under the bridge, which is quick. This will be a quick run. This will be in the late 40s, I think. James Kerr, James Robinson in the Clio time of 56.24. Here's the Peugeot, leans it into and through the S's, even leaves black lines on the track. Out of here's a bit of wheel spin from those front wheels. And it is, yeah, 49.58 by two tenths. He's under the 50 second mark. That's brilliant. Here's our record holder in this class. It's Michael Thompson in the Honda S2000. Quick car, quick driver. You needed to rev these Hondas to make them go. They didn't, pull, didn't enjoy pulling from low revs, but get them up to four and a half, five thousand revs and they start to sing. And this one sings at 48.9. Now, what can Simon Curtin in the Exige do about that? 48.9. Is only five hundredths outside his own record by Michael Thompson. It wouldn't have counted as a record in practice, but uh, it's a fine portent for tomorrow. The Stone in a lovely three-litre 911 RS. This is the Porsche, of course, with the flat six engine hanging out of the back, which means that off the line you get great traction. Not much wheel spin, as you can see by 2.34 for his first 64 feet. Simon Curtin in the Exige 49.32, so four tenths slower than Michael Thompson in the Honda. Now, Vauxhall VX220 built on the Lotus Elise basis. When General Motors owned Lotus, they wanted a, their own version of a sports car. So a slightly longer wheelbase than the Elise, and a, in many ways more civilized. Didn't sell very well until the turbo came along, of which this is a nice example. And then it started selling well. So they're much rarer than uh, Lotus Elise's. And they're quick as well, 50.59 for David Meek. We had a glimpse of a plus eight Morgan, there it is again. Five litre Morgan in the hands of Mike Meredith, the famous plus eight with the five litre version of the famous Rover V8 engine that was based on the Buick Oldsmobile little V8 that uh, was introduced by General Motors and then quickly withdrawn.
They said it's too small. Another Cayman. 3.4 liter in the hands of Paul, uh, in the hands of Philip James. Seems to have modified air intakes just in front of the rear wheels, maybe for extra cooling for maybe a much modified engine. There is one Cayman on the hills that the engine is producing something like 400 horsepower. So they're very much tunable. In the meantime, Mike Meredith in the plus eight Morgan, he's under 50 seconds with a 49.84. He'll be pleased with that. And the Cayman, 51.55. Philip James has finished. Here's a, a very fierce Porsche 911, the GT3. 997 version of the rear engine Porsche. These, the GT3 was always the, every, every iteration of the Porsche had a GT3, which was the quickest road car rather than track car. What can Richard York do in his? I think he'll be early 50s maybe, got plenty of grunt, can floor the throttle for a 52.26. But Robert Lancaster Gay in his GT3, he's a highly experienced hill climber, he's been hill climbing this and other similar Porsches for a long time knows his way up Prescott like the back of his hand. Let's see what he does off the line. Brilliant start. 2.31 is rapid. Almost one force of gravity. And 66 miles an hour rounding orchard. We have moved on to class A3. And the record in this class is held by a Porsche in the hands of David Dyson at 47.02. So can Robert Lancaster Gay threaten that? We shall see very shortly. Richard York in his GT3 52.26. Robert 49.08, a couple of seconds outside the record, followed by Simon Tarling, and Simon's in another GT3, slightly earlier one with a 3.6 litre engine, unturbocharged of course. heads up towards the semicircle. Meanwhile, John Maycock in his MX-1. Quick car, much modified, well driven. Let's see it through the S's. Meanwhile, we've got a time for Simon Tarling's Porsche, 50.41. Five zero one. Now, can James? Yeah, he'll be well under the 50 mark. His very rapid MX-5. He records a 48-1. Excellent run by John. Here's Tim Cross in the 172 BHP version of the 2-litre Renault Clio. So these are shared cars in class A, A1. So cars with a seven in their number are being shared. John Maycock, 48.1, that's a really good time in the MX-5. What can Tim Cross do? He does a 55.06. Ian Richards sharing number 21 with David Garnett. No drama, 
Desert, the Asses. And Robert Wilson chucks the 205, 1.9 round, fortune at 68. That's very quick through that speed trap. some excitement on the line which you'll see very shortly but in the meantime Robert Wilson hurling the Peugeot up the hill Ian Richards number 721 did a 53.29 and records a 49.52 now look at this off on the line this is Jack Cottrell in the DJ Delara Cosworth. Well, what's that? Well, it's a Delara Tub X Formula 3, but most of it is DJ, including installing the 2.6 litre Indy Car Cosworth engine, which for in Indianapolis would have been turbocharged on methanol, producing around about 1,000 horsepower in 2.65 trim, as Jack has, Jack has got it in the Jays probably producing five six hundred enough to be going on with because this car is new to them this year and they're doing great time in it. So Jack records a forty point six three. That's fine for starters. Back to shared cars in class A three. This is Ross Stone in the RS3 Peter Porsche 911 in classic golf colours. So the Porsche heads for the S's. And following him will be Dave Nixon in the Impreza in Class A3 four-wheel drive series production cars. Well, he's in uh, Subaru Impreza, so it is four-wheel drive. It's flat four. It's turbocharged, looking for all the world like a pro-drive uh, rally works car. It might indeed be X drive. Ross Stone's time 55.27 in the Gulf Liberate GT3 Porsche. The Subaru is followed by Infido, long-time uh, single-seater racer and uh, has driven lots of cars in this brand new Toyota Yaris with the circuit pack. Now this is, this is a hot hatch that is really putting the cat among the pigeons uh, and uh, threatening the favorite hot hatch position of the Ford Fiesta Sport. Had rave reviews in all the road test it's really rapid rinky dink little car and Ian Fido Ian Fido's is the first one I think we've seen on the hills we've got a time for Dave Nixon number 51 in the Impreza of 51.54 Ian Fido is just about to finish in the Yaris 5768 now Bruce Bosley we're into class B, road car specialist production with a Caterham, a Westfield and an AMS Murtara, which we'll see very shortly. Bruce Bosley in his Caterham with a 1600, I guess, Ford engine. And the right-hand winker around the left-hand corner, but that's okay. He was anticipating semicircle and it's a run with a time of 56. Now look at this AMS Murtaya which is basically Impreza parts four wheel drive flat four engine turbocharge with the AMS Murtaya body so it saves a lot of weight on the standard Super Impreza makes it very rorty and quick sports car as is the Westfield SE1 Tim Higgins with its 2 litre Vauxhall engine. 
48.54 for John Pick in the good time. Very good time indeed. Um, but he's facing a record in his class of 43.97. So that was Darren Luke some time ago in 2013. So that's a record that's waiting to be broken. Tim Higgins has finished his Westfield, Peter Lethbridge, Cajun seven. Sixteen nineties of seventeen hundred could be a cross flow. This Austin Mini Cooper of Ben Hamer is extremely rapid and uh, looking absolutely standard, but it isn't. Although it's still only got a one liter engine, the Cooper S, when it first came out, you had the choice of uh, one liter, I think 1100 and 1275. Most people opted for 1275. In fact, the one liter engine was very tunable, as proven by Ben Hamer. Peter Lethbridge has finished with 52.3. Now, what can Ben Hamer do? Well, it's in the mid 50s, 53.41. Triumph Spitfire. The Mark III. Great competition for the Austin Healy Sprite. And to capture the early days by its Triumph Herald chassis with the swing axle rear suspension, but the later ones. The rear suspension was calmed down a bit. Um, this one, of course, very much modified, both engine and suspension for hill climbing. And a rapid car, mid 50s, I guess. 57.89. Now, Fiat X19, you don't see many of these around nowadays. Little mid engine Fiat sports car, very popular indeed, but sadly, Dated from a time when Fiat did a deal with Russia for steel, and they got steel which was made out of old rusty nuts and bolts, and unfortunately, the great majority of X19s, along with other Fiats and other Italian cars, got rusted away to nothing, which was sad. He's heads for the finish with a 60.41, and he's followed by, well, we don't often see hill climbing, the Vauxhall Nova, little hot hatch, but this one is very hot, with the lovely load suspension, good handling, modified engine, and he might well be in the 40s, let's keep an eye on this, it is indeed, 49.04, is a great time for Phil's Vauxhall Nova, Andrew Russell has been racing this Janetta G15 for well over 20 years. Always immaculate, always immaculately driven, modified, much modified Hillman Imp engine in the back. Hillman Imp engine face, of course, on the Contra Climax engine. Very lightweight, all an aluminum engine. And a nice little bit of oversteer for Andrew out of top rope corner. And it's a 51.17. But Eric Morey has a much, much modified Hillman Imp. It's that smell, lovely smell of Castrol R when he was revving it on the line and went off with lots of pops and bangs. So this is a rapid car. We are in Class C1 modified cars up to 1400. And the record is at 47.17 by this car, recorded in 2018. So can Eric beat his own record? The record stood at 47.17. Don't think so on this occasion. Remember, it's, it's practice, and it's a 49.34. Here's Andy Fraser in the specially built for hill climbing Aston Martin Vantage, built up from a body shell they got from Pro Drive, which I think had been da slightly damaged in circuit racing, so they used the body and uh, 
chucked away a lot of the Aston Martin weight. Has a manual gearbox. The GT4 ones all have happy paddles. And uh, Andy Fraser and Tim Painter share this car. Quite a needle match between the couple of them. But it's always a delight to see and a delight to listen to that lovely V8 engine in the Aston. Well, the period when Aston really cleaned up in GT racing. For Andy Fraser's time, 49.84, that's a good time. Now then, notice exige of Paul Jones. This is class C2, modified series production up to two liters and combined with over two liters. So these two classes are lumped together records held by Paul Howells, Porsche 911 RSR in 43.92 and we've got a nice example of a Porsche off the line and has a Peter Turnbull 2.24 for the first 64 feet, Paul Jones 2.21 which is quick and he, Paul Jones in the Exige 49.65 now what can Peter Turnbull do in this fearsome 3.6 litre Porsche 997 Cup an even wilder car on the start line which we'll see if you're watching on the screen we'll see in a second but in the meantime we're following Peter Turnbull through the S's this will be mid 40s maybe we're focusing at the moment on Mike Turpin's incredible VX 220 47.59 for Peter Turnbull now, what can Mike Turpin do? X Rally Cross, much modified VX220, I think turbocharged. And I might be wrong, it's quick anyway. And Mike certainly knows how to pedal it uphill for the best effect. Remember, it's practice, there's no need to go absolutely crazy. Just feeling out the state of the hill. So for Mike Turbin, it's a 47.97. Little bit of the hill has been re tarmacked on the way into the into semi circle, but it doesn't have any effect on the times up the hill. Now, here is Paul Howells record holder in this Porsche 911 RSR this time to break, break the record was a 43.92 remember it's practice it wouldn't count even if he beats it on this occasion but these guys will get two runs tomorrow and the forecast for tomorrow is perhaps even better than today sunny and nice and warm 45.34 for Paul in the Porsche. Now then, Austin Mini Cooper again. This is this highly modified one in the hands of Will Kerr. Number 770. So he's shown with Ben Hamer. Not sure which of the pair is the quicker. But they're having a go at Eric Morris, Hillman Imprint on 47.17 in this very much modified and very quick but very original looking. One liter Mini Cooper S. We think the BMW Mini, the current Mini, is a small car, but Alec Isagonis was a genius for squeezing enough space for four people inside the tiny little Mini. Will's finished with a 5292. Now, this is lots of power. This is Stephen Moore's Evo 6 Mitsubishi capable of being tuned up to about 600 horsepower. I'm not sure how much power Stevens is producing, but enough, you would say. Remember, it's four-wheel drive as well. So it was 2.23 off the start. Shows the advantage. 47.47 for Stephen Moore. Westfield, two litre Westfield, usually means a Vauxhall engine. And in this case, it certainly does. That's Phil Fisher.
Bill is kicking off Class D. Modified Specialist Production Cars, which is a Catrum Oblique Westfield Monopoly. So Phil Fisher is nearly finished and has done with a 50.18. Here's Richard Price in a bike engine, Catrum 7, 41. I guess a Suzuki, but I'm not sure. Disappears into the S's, reappears into the S's. Oh dear, slightly wide. Might have cost him a tenth or two going onto the grass, but luckily he kept control and records a good time, 43.43. Record in this class goes to Ash Mason, who will be we will be seeing pretty soon. Meantime, here's Ray Law in the Cajun Super Sprint. Slight uh, oversteering moment halfway around in Torres has cost him a tenth or two. This is a another Vauxhall engine, but bored out slightly to 2068 cc. So there's a big argument about um, whether you have a car engine or a bike engine in your West or Caterham. So from the capacity, you can see this is. Uh, engine in the hands of Jerry Neary, 1998 meets Vauxhall. Raymond Law finishes with a 48.12. Jerry, always a keen needle match between Jerry Neary and Ray Law on the line. Stephen Garner in another Westfield, just over the two litre mark. Off the line in 2.37, but 77 miles an hour into Orchard, which is very quick. Jerry Neary, 49.93. What can Steve Garner do? I think it'll be a bit quicker, Jerry. Uh, Steve, highly experienced in this car. Yeah, this is going to be in the low 40s, I think. 44, 45. 44.15, great time by Steve Garner. What can Simon Jenks do? Caterham Super Sport. I think, despite it being 1667, I think this is a bike engine. Could well be wrong. It's quick anyway. Bike engine, of course, doesn't have chain drive. It's a shaft drive to a normal differential at the back. Drive taken from the uh, Suzuki gearbox. Now, can Simon Jenks beat 44.15? Yes, he can. He can with a 43.3. Andrew Griffiths. Now, he's got a high booster engine in his Caterham quickest 64 feet of all with 2.15 and 82 under the bridge this will be a really quick time can it threaten Ash Mason's record Ash is on the line at the moment we'll see in a second or two remember Ash Mason's record stands at and will continue to stand of course unless, unless it's beaten tomorrow at 41.27, 41.38, very near Ash Mason's record for Andrew Griffiths. Brilliant. Now here is Ash, not quite as quick under the bridge as the previous runner, but a quickness start, 2.09. Ash worked for a long time for Ben. They looked after their classic and uh, the more cars and often demonstrated the Le Mans winning Bentley 8 in various places like Goodwood. Brilliant driver. Has built up this car himself. It's a 42.53. 42.53. So Ash 
getting ready for tomorrow, as is Tim Painter in the Vantage GT4. Well, it isn't really GT4, so it certainly doesn't comply with the GT4 regulations. It's much lighter. If, it, if you're looking on the screen, it's not 3.4 litres, it's 4.3. Road test of the latest Aston Martin Vantage in Autocar this week got mixed reviews because the Vantage has been on the market for a long time and probably, well, it's, it's due to be replaced, isn't it, by the rear engine Valhalla pretty soon. Now then, a, a unique car, the R RM Lakota of Mark Puddle, number 110, with a 30-40cc bike engine behind him. Tim in the Aston 48.8. Here's the RM Lakota of Mark Puddle. He was quick off the line, 2.08 and 70 under the bridge. So this will be in the mid-ish 40s. 48.08. Martin Watts in the one litre silver riot. That's a Honda Blackbird engine behind him. Silver made all sorts of versions of their kit cars. Some front engine, some four-wheel drive. This one, of course, two-wheel drive and rear engine. But uh, Martin really enjoying the little silver. <laughs> Off the line comes Ben Fisher, sharing with Phil. <laughs> Meanwhile, Martin Watts in the silver. Good time, 47 seconds dead. Ben Fisher. Family battle in the Vauxhall part Westfield SE. He'll be followed by an extremely rapid bike, Hayabusa engine one in the hands of Tom Price, but we're watching Ben through the S's. Holds it. Take every inch of the road through and out of the S's. This will be a quick run. This will be in the low 40s. It is 42.16 for Tom. Alan McDonald, you think, hey, that looks a bit like a mini. Well, <laughs> I think one mini component is one of the Hinges, but it's basically a Mitsubishi Evo on a space frame and it is very quick. You wouldn't call it Concours condition. It's been well used, well campaigned. two meters and uh, sports racing cars and it brings us to our first of our single seater classes kicked off by Chris Howard Harris in the 600 cc OMS Hornet. Meanwhile Alan McDonald in the Evo 44.94 Chris Howard Harris in the OMS is quick under the bridge at 74 He's followed by the Mark IV Jedi 600 of Richard Walker. It's good to see the 600 class coming back for a while. They only had one or two entries to make a separate 600 CC class, so they were lumped together with the 1100, which rather handicapped them. Chris Howard Harris, 44.83. What can Richard Walker do in the Mark IV Jedi? And coming along is a very rapid car. This is Adam Greenan in the Empire Evo 2. This car is quick enough more than once to get into the British Hill Time Championship runoff. And it's 
a needle match between two brothers, Adam and Andy. Absolutely on the limit out of S's. Catches it nicely. Equally round semicircle, 39.19. Our first run today in the 30s. It's a brilliant run by Adam Greener. Now then, Campbell Adams in an early-ish OMS. One litre bike engine OMS. Built up in Yorkshire by Steve Owen who's uh, built well over a hundred single-seater hill climb cars and one or two two-seaters as well. Now then, Campbell, it'll be a late 40s. It is, it's 49.24. Here's Mark Lawrence in a MS 3000 M. Carbon fiber monocoque. We're now in the 1100 class. That was led off by Adam Greenan. We recorded our first time in the 30s with 3919. Now, what can Mark Lawrence do? He can do a 41.05. Richard Summers, le patron of the Summers hill climbing family. We see Lindsay, we see Alex. I'm not sure that Debbie, who is now Debbie Summers, was Debbie Dunbar. Don't think she's competing this weekend. There she is. No, Debbie will be in this car. But Richard records a 40.78. Now here's Richard Matosian. Now this is interesting. This is the ex-Robert Kenrick GWR Raptor with his one liter BMW engine, which holds the record in this class with the 36.97. And in fact, in your program, you'll see a chart of the records here and you'll see that Robert Kenrick what did he do? He did a, a run in the 35s. In the meantime Richard Matossian getting to grips with the Raptor to record a 43 seconds exactly. Now Clive Austin on the line in the Empire Wraith with its very exotic aerodynamics had an engine go at the last Chelsea meeting last year and so this is the first outing for Clive in the Empire Wraith with its rebuilt engine, or with a new engine. And he's very pleased with it. He says it takes a bit of getting used to the car again and realizing the grip and the road holding that it offers you. So he's feeling his way back. He's always been very competitive. He has a lovely collection of cars as well. Clive heads for the finish, and the 42-1-1 is fine for starters. Back on the hills again after a long layoff. David Tatham in the OMS Hornet. So David, his dad, is also uh, competing in the bigger class. Remember, we're still in the 1100 racing cars. David safely round 40.89. It's a good run by David Tatham. Now James Moore, Empire Evo. Really enjoying this car. It's not not the very latest version of the Evo. Offline Steve Marr, we're watching uh, 
progress of James Moore as well. 42.53, Steve Moore in the PCD, Saxon. PCD was the predecessor to the to the GWR Predators and Raptors. Car designed by my, Martin Ogilvy, XF1 designer. So this led to Graham Wright producing the his range of Raptors and Predators, and uh, that's a good time by Steve Marr, 39.83, brings us to the Formula Ford cars. Nice to have five entries in the Formula Fords, kicked off by Richard Weaver, sharing with his son Tom in this 1991 Van Diemen, classic wide track narrow bodywork of the 90s Formula Ford. Formula Ford has really dwindled a little bit from the days when it really was the nursery for future F1 drivers. They all seem to come up now through karting and in, then into uh, F3. But Richard Weaver has finished with a 50.05. Here's Les Buck in the Bring It Strong. Mr. Pringle and Mr. Bennett made, I think, 14 of these cars to compete in Formula Ford. Les has had this one for a number of years. Can he, get it, can he get it under the 50-second mark? By just... No, just over 50.17, but nevertheless, it's practice. He'll be happy with that. Nicky Cottrell in the Lotus 61. Lotus's final production Formula Ford car from the days when Colin Chapman was convinced that uh, the wedgy shape gave you downforce without the need for wings reflected in the Lotus 72 and uh, other wedge-shaped Lotus racing cars. Nicky Cottrell in the Lotus 61, followed by Steve Morgan off the line in another Van Diemen, slightly early one than Richard Weaver's, 1989. Nicky, 51.1. Richard's so far is the quickest Formula Ford in the time of Five. What can Steve Morgan do? No dramas at all. I think it's a in the low 50s, probably. Now here's Andrew Green and sharing with Adam. We saw Adam earlier. Ninety-three through the speed trap. This is really quick. This will be probably in the late mid to late thirties. Lovely line through the S's. Wide approach, and then squirts it through. Slight oversteery moment through semicircle. 39.6 for Andrew. I think a couple of moments cost him a tenth or two. Here's Liam Cooper in the force TA. Sharing it with his wife Olivia. Another oversteery moment under braking for Torres. Touch of opposite lock, but no harm done. He and Olivia have campaigned this car for 
three or four years, always beautifully prepared, understeer at semicircle, and Liam really had to lift off. Cost him a lot, and he's, I think, decided not to go crazy around semicircle, 44.19. Now Ben Stevenson is having his first go in the Empire Wraith that belongs to Zach Zamet in Malta. Well, from Malta. And um, Ben is sharing with Charles Hall, who was a sensation in this car earlier in the season. And this is Ben's first go in this car. You wouldn't think so from the way he's going. This might well be in the late 30s, early 40s, late 30s. Yeah, 39.77, brilliant, because I don't think Ben has driven this car, never even sat in it before today. Another double driven car, this is Alan Warburton, sharing with his son David in the amazing GR59 Gould, 1600 unblown Hayabusa engine, shaft drive, really interesting transmission system in this car because it's a bike engine, but the bike engine is not sideways across the frame. It's fore and aft with the shaft drive to the trans axle at the back. I think Alan had a bit of a moment into a Tories. I saw a bit of smoke from locked wheels and a wide, just missing the rectocell at the exit. 41.33. I don't think Alan will be pleased with that, but uh, that's what you do in practice, you find the limit. Rob Anscombe, this car is for sale. So if you fancy a very nice OMS Hornet, well developed by Rob. I think he's going for an Empire Evo next. In the meantime, he's really enjoyed competing in this OMS Hornet. So if you're looking to get into easy to run single seaters this may well be the car for you have a nice word with rob he finishes with a 45.49 harry pick is always quick in the 2000 m oms yeah 89 under bridge is very quick 2.09 is a rapid start These are the shared cars in Class I, racing cars up to 1100cc, and Harry, of course, is sharing this car with Mark Lawrence, who we saw earlier. And Pick is always quick. As demonstrated by a 39.42, brilliant. Debbie, Debbie Summers. Used to be Debbie Dunbar until last week when she and Alex got hitched. And so she's sharing this car with her father-in-law, Richard. And Debbie is an excellent driver. And she's, oh, she's just over the 40-second mark, 40.1. Good run though. Caroline, rider in the Empire Wraith. Aerodynamics of this car developed by Willem Towit, who was chief aerodynamicist for Ferrari, for Benetton, and now for Sauber. Although, of course, it's not called Sauber anymore, is it? But you know who I mean. Caroline into semicircle. Roland Hamber is taken off the line in a very unusual looking OMS, but uh, Caroline's time 43.27. Much modified little OMS with a one litre engine. Dramas at the S's for Roland. It'll be a 
46 or so. Yeah, 46.72 on the line. Jason Tunnicliffe, he's quick in this Empire Evo 2. This is the current version of the Empire Evo. Hump on the front of the bodywork indicates a monoshock under there. 94 into Orchard is extremely quick. He had to lift off a bit. In a slight, slidey moment. Hoff, well, at the entrance to Orchard, but hasn't deterred him. He's still going extremely quickly. Ayabusa powered Empire. The way these cars turn in is just amazing. And the way they recover from oversteer is equally amazing. I feared that he was heading for the Armco, but he caught it just in time to record a 39.4. I reckon that would have been much lower in the 39s if he hadn't had that oversteery moment at S's. John Stockley, Force FSF. I think that means space frame rather than carbon fiber tub. But again with the Hayabusa. Not quite as quick under bridge, 88 miles an hour. Safely through S's. Low 40s, 43 or so. 41.79, better. Good job, stop me. Neil Coles, in the current version of the OMS, the OMS 28. He hasn't stopped, the camera did. A little bit of dust taking every inch of the road out of Pardon. This is Neil Coles. Forty one point nine seven. That's okay. down, really hurled it into the S's, just recovered it before he got to the Armco in his first TA, and it's a good time, 38.98, but his, Einon Price in his Hayabusa powered force, Einon frequently gets into the top 12 runoff for the British Hill Climb Championship, extremely rapid car driver combination, Pride of Wales, Ainon, yeah, this is quick. This will be in the 38s. It is, it's a 38.41 for Ainon Price. Excellent. We've got a bit of sweeping going on, I think. Uh, that dusty moment out of pardon needs a little bit of sweeping. So held on the line is Tom Weaver, son of Richard. Tom has been invited to the Masters hill climb championship runoff the end of season runoffs that take place in portugal in october and it invites class winners from all over europe and so we have a number of our top runners going to the master championship and uh, it's a terrific event it, last year i think it was in italy so it goes from country to country. But of course, European hill climbing is very different from uh, hills in this country. It tends to be much longer, you know, five, six kilometers, maybe longer, 10 kilometers sometimes. <coughs> Usually up a mountain pass of some sort, which means that our guys who go over there often have to fit a supplementary fuel tank to uh, enable them to get up to the top of the hill but they're very well looked after and uh, the Masters meeting will be shown on TV. Certainly it's live streamed and uh, can be found like this on uh, YouTube and uh, various websites. So, sweeping has done, red flag is in and Tom, 
needle match between him and his dad, but Tom is currently in the lead in that uh, partnership, and Richard says, well, it's all down to weight. And he's probably right. But it's also down to a lot of skill by Tom, who's in his second season in this car. Great way of getting into single-seater hill climbing, Formula Ford. Not terribly expensive, lots of them around. And all of our champs have come up through the ranks, either saloon cars, hot hatches, caterums, or Formula Fords, little racing cars, until we get up to the big class. Here's Olivia Cooper. We saw Liam just now in this car. She's quick. It's in the genes, you know, because her dad, Richard, was record holder at Chelsea Wards for a long time in the um, pill beam mp58 so olivia 40.54 very similar time to liam now here's charles hall who burst on the scene in, here at prescott in april never having seen a hill climb before never having sat in a hill climb car very much a circuit racer and actually qualified in a time that would have put him fifth in the runoff but of course he wasn't registered for the championship in those days and I think this is Charles's last competitive hill climb this year. He's going to Donington next weekend, competing there. And it's a 38.8 for Charles Hall. David Warburton, we saw Father Allen having a bit of a moment into a tourism in this car, which cost him a bit of time. David is proudly carrying number 10 on his car, which indicates that he came 10th in the Hill Climb Championship in 2019. He currently, currently lies 10th in this year's championship as well. So he's finished, David, with the 37.96. Here's Jonathan Evans in the Swallow, sharing this car. Swallow produced a number of racing cars in the late 70s, early 80s for Super Ford and various other classes, Formula 3 as well. 45.9 for him. Nicola Dearden had a almost stalled the car off the line, had to gather it all up together again, so it cost a, a good second over the first 64 feet. She's sharing, as always, this Delara X, Formula 3 Delara, with a Vauxhall engine, with Andrew Henson. Nicola finishes with a 48.25. She's followed by Trisha Davis in the Reynard, X Formula 3 Reynard, but with the V8 2 litre V8 engine produced by husband Terry, TKD engine. He's produced a number of these brilliant uh, V8s that are two uh, motorcycle cylinder heads and blocks combined on a common crankcase. It's a beautiful engineering job. And uh, lots of people are running these engines in hill climbing. Trisha, 44.65. On the line is Andrew Colborn's much modified Van Diemen Super Ford, fitted with a 2 litre Vauxhall engine. We are now in the up to 2 litre normally aspirated class. Class K, class which I used to many a long year, really loved it. So Andrew, over the shark's teeth on the way out of 
S's won't cost him anything, but he's followed by Joshua Moss, another bright orange Van Diemen, but with a two litre box or engine. And Andrew finishes with a 43.04. What can Joshua do? Delar, of course, produced hundreds of carbon fibre tubs for Formula 3, so not difficult to get hold of one and then maybe shorten the wheelbase, soften the suspension, fit up an unlimited Vauxhall engine rather than the strangled uh, Formula 3 engine and you get a 40.37. Here's Mike Dragonic up from Cornwall in uh, the hill beam. Hill beam dominated hill climbing in the 80s, 70s and 80s. And then Mike Pilbeam retired. Kieran Pilbeam was involved in uh, engineering cars for people like um, Weber. And so the Pilbeam has almost disappeared from the scene, but it's nice to see this MP88 of Mike going strong with his Ford engine to record a 43.7. But here's another Delara. But this one's got the TKD V8 in the back, like uh, Trisha Davis. Tim lifts up the road in Stratford on Avon. Doesn't appear at every meeting. He's got uh, commitments at home. Nice oversteery way through Pardon. Lines him up for the squirt to the S's. Can he get under 40 seconds? No, I don't think so. It'll be low 40s, 41.26, that's okay. Now here's an interesting car. This is the GWR Predator, X Graham Wright Jr., but now fitted by Jonathan with a two liter TKD engine. And it's an incredible engineering work to squeeze that V8 engine into this tiny car. Jonathan's having a great season in this car. The engine mated with the uh, Hewland gearbox out of his march. So it's, uh, it's a recipe that works. 39.29 for John Barley. OMS again. Yeah, Jonathan 39.29, Ian Tucker on the line in another OMS 28, carbon fiber tub, latest version of the OMS. Beautifully presented in white with red lettering, 2.24 off the line and 69 through the bridge speed trap. Last runner of this class is on the line, it's Lee Griffiths, but it's focused on Ian Tucker. I will just mention Lee Griffiths off the line in 2.07, one of our quickest 64 feet times so far, and 92 on the bridge, so that'll be a quick run. Meanwhile, Ian Tucker runs, has finished with a 45.97 Lee, runs a Tories run part. Mark, I think he can by some margin. I think 38.39. Excellent run by Lee Griffiths. That's fantastic. And we've got the shared car of the Alexanders has perhaps broken a chain on the line. He came to the line and tried to launch it, but something broke. If it's a chain, it's not the end of the world relatively easy to replace. Let's hope it's no more than that.
Hopefully there tomorrow, see some records go. Love Prescott. Yeah, we do. Kev Davis. Well, I hope you can get here tomorrow, and I hope some records go. Stu Lugger. Thanks, Stu. Good luck to everyone competing today. Good conditions. You're absolutely right. They are good. Now, the Alexanders haven't taken the car back into the paddock, so maybe it's a quick fix. But in the meantime, out of the paddock comes John Chalmers in the unique wrought Formula 3. But with a unique engine combining Hayabusa head and barrels on a special crankcase to line up the transmission. Broke a gear at Chelsley, previous meeting, but now all fixed and going fine. Going very fine, 96, almost 100 under through the bridge trap. What can John do? Hugging the grass at the Tories. Son-in-law of the great Roy Lane, who we miss very much. He was a terrific driver and a great character. A good friend. So John, can he get under the 40 mark? Not quite, 40.44. Kelvin Broad in the Force TA, which is relatively new to him. He was a great Lotus exponent earlier, but he's really enjoying campaigning this Force TA. This is class K3, racing cars up to two liters with forced induction, i.e. or either supercharged or turbocharged. So as you can see from your program, most of them are around the 1300cc, which means a Suzuki Hayabusa engine not bored out. Kelvin, 39.59, he'll be pleased to be under the 40 mark. Paul Hames with the Gould GR59. State-of-the-art hill climb car. Stalls it getting off the line, doesn't matter because as long as your rear wheels don't cross the line, you haven't started your run. So Paul gets another go. Blown 1300 Hayabusa, Gul GR59. One piece monocoque all the way from the front to the back, so the engine goes in from underneath. Sister car to the record holder here, but the record holder car has a 4 litre Judd engine, whereas this has a 1300 blown Hayabusa, but it's quick. 101, first of all, 100 mile an hour, 100 mile an hour is through that speed trap, 2.13. Paul, great contender for qualifying for the 12, 12 runoff, despite only having 1300cc, but mind you, a blown 1300 Hayabusa can produce 450, 500 horsepower. There's no shortage of power. The thing only weighs 400 or so kilos. So no wonder they're quick, and it's a 37.9 for Paul. Record 36.08, held by Richard Spedding, who is here in the GWR Raptor with a supercharged engine. So can Richard this weekend beat his own record? In the meantime, Pete Tatham in the MS25, predecessor to the MS28, slightly earlier technology than the 28, but still a highly effective hill climb car. And Pete also frequently qualifies in the runoff. Can I see where he stands in the championship? And no, I can't at the moment. He 
finishes with a 38-81. Now Simon Moy, similar car to similar car to Paul Hames, Gold GR59, blown Hayabusa 1300 engine. And Simon Moyes is 17th in the championship at the moment. 105, quickest so far today through the bridge speed track. Simon used to share a car with his dad, but uh, dad has moved on. And Simon in the GR59, very rapidly getting the hang of this car. This will be well under the 40-second mark. Brilliant run, 37.97 for Simon. Here's our record holder with a 36.08, but he almost bogged down at the start. So it was 2.8 off the line, as against what it ought to be, and maybe a 2.1, 2.2. So Richard really sussing out the grip of the line. It's not easy, I say this every time, it's not easy to get a racing car off the line. They don't have fly wheels. And it's a fine line between too much wheel spin and stalling the engine. Richard in the GWR Raptor. Graham Wright Jr. built up in near Aberdeen. 38-3-1, 38-3-1. Exciting run by Richard. Kevin Craven in the Swallow, which he's sharing. We saw it a bit earlier in the hands of Jonathan Evans. Kevin over the finishing line for the 4378. Andrew Hansen sharing the Dallara with Nicola Dearden, as always. So she's got the car up for him. Amazing how little the Dallara Formula 3 car changed through the years. This is a 1994 tub. Part of, partly a marketing, marketing ploy to get people to buy a new one to make slight improvements every year. Andrew over the line, ah, 40.29. He'll wish he'd been three tenths quicker and got it into the 30s. But here's Terry Davis. We saw Trisha just now in their Reynard with his own two litre V8 in the back of it. I think it's based on two Yamaha bike engines. Quick under the bridge, 86. Whitish out of orchard, but that's okay. And middle of the road round Ed Torres. Slides it nicely out of the S's. Highly experienced and a brilliant engine builder. 40.65 for Terry. On the line, Graham Wynn sharing his GR59 with six time champion Scott Moran in the Gould GR59 with a four litre Judd engine. The sort of engine that would power an LMP2 car at Le Mans. So if it could stand. 24 hours of flat out racing at Le Mans. It doesn't need a rebuild every year if it's just on hill climbing. The great advantage is plenty of grunt low down with a big 4 litre engine. Gone wide at the Tories, but luckily kept it out of the gravel. Graham really enjoying sharing this car with Scotty. 
has to be careful not to uh, in any way have a failed run that meant, means that Scott can't run but uh, 39.31 is very respectable now the matriarch of the Summers family Lindsay sharing with her son Alex the DJ Firestorm that lies in second place in the British Open Championship it's her car she lends it to Alex every now and then and she's no mean peddler decides to take a very wide line around the Tories but no harm in that and a wide entry into Rolt then lines it up for semicircle. And it's a 42.97. We'll see Alex in this car in a few minutes time. In the meantime, another shared car. This is Mrs. OMS, Lynn Owen, sharing with her husband the latest OMS, but with a Powertech 2.7 V8 engine and really enjoying the power of this 2.7 litre engine. Interesting color. Kermit would like that. Then heads for the S's on the line. Bernard Kevill in another OMS 28. See it in a second. Meanwhile, Lynn rounds the semicircle. Here's Bernard Kevill, MS28, with the first of the TKD V8 engines prototype. Not hugely powerful, but a nice, easy to run, to run engine. And getting a lot of help from Terry Davis looking after this engine. sharing this car of course with Simon Andrews and records at 41.87 in the meantime here's Jack Cotterell in the DJ we saw John in this car earlier this is the DJ modified to Lara tub with an IndyCar engine the back 2.6 meters NME engine not Methanol, I don't think. There's no yellow blob, I don't think, on the side of the car. So, certainly not running with turbocharger. But this is their first season with this engine in this car. And uh, they're rapidly getting the hang of it. Going quicker and quicker. And 39.28 for Jack. Very respectable indeed. Paul Kruitz, OMS 28, interesting engine. This is a 3 litre Jaguar V6 engine of the type that would have powered the um, X type Jaguar, which makes a nice noise but doesn't produce a huge amount of power but gives Paul a lot of fun. He's followed by Terry Graves in an early Gould, the GR37. Terry's had this car for a while, slightly understeery out of the S's. So since the 37, they've been the 55 and the 59. Now here's our record holder on the line. This is Sean Gould, four litre Judd Power GR59. You'd think it's a one-piece moulding for the monocoque front to back, but actually it's three different types of carbon fibre depending on the job it had to do. Front one, of course, for deformation. Rear one over the engine for heat resistance. They're all a different, slightly different composition of carbon fibre glued 
ribs in glued together, but uh, no opening at the top of the engine, uh, top of the car to get the engine in. You have to jack it up and put the engine in from underneath. Now, Sean, 36.27. Well, for starters, that's pretty good. 101 at the bridge, but 1.93 off the line. Great to welcome Will Hall back on the hills. Will, I was saying earlier, had a horrendous accident at, uh, at Gersten Down in this car earlier in the season and uh, he's got to get back into it and got to get used to it it never was an easy car to get off the line it's a four-cylinder aer engine of the type that powered the mg rovers at le mans 15 or so years ago without great success but um, four cylinders two liters but uh, blown of course and uh, has been developed to produce north of 700 horsepower, but uh, Will told me earlier that the great thing about this engine is the way it pulls from low down. Lots of torque. But he's had a lot of development trouble getting the engine and transmission electronics to talk to each other. So, his launch control... Brilliant. 2.09, that's okay. Off the line. 95 round orchard. Will's lost, lost, lost none of his skill and courage. This car built by Force in Dason's company, Rugely. Will be happy with the 38.66 getting back into the swing of things after a long layoff while the car was being repaired. Trevor Willis, three times champion. The car, bits of which date 14, 15 years ago. This tub, I think, uh, is six or seven years old. So this car has won the championship for Trevor three times. It's getting slightly outpaced in terms of power, but not in terms of Trevor's skill at the wheel. He's currently lying fifth in the championship. 36.73. Here's David Uren in the Gold GR55 that for a long time held the record at Chelsea Walsh and in fact still has just acquired the ladies record at Shelsley in the hands of David's co-driver Nicola Mingus and David is lying sixth in the championship at the moment So he'll, he should be a shoe in for the top 12 runoff. And a good sighting time of 37.02. On the line, Scott Moran, six times champion. Now shame with Graham Wynn in the GR59. They've developed this car through the season, going quicker and quicker, getting the handling sorted. 104 at bridge. Scotty immensely skilled, but it's taken a bit of getting used to the differences between his championship winning GR61X and this GR59, which has more power, more grunt low down, and lighter weight by some 60 kilos than the GR61. It'll be in the 36s or 37s or 38s, 38.28 for Scotty. Lying second in the championship, Alex Summers. Borrowed his mum's car. This is the DJ Firestorm with his Cosworth XD, only 2.6 litres. So it loses out to the 3.3 litres and 4 litres of Wallace Mingus uh, 
and in the engine and the jug, particularly in terms of low down grunt. So Alex, nevertheless, is only nine points behind Wallace in the battle for the lead in the championship. Was champion. champion 2015 I think. and it's a 36.06 remember the record 35.41 up to the line comes current champion and leading the championship for this year remember that the 2019 was the last year in which the British Hill Climb Championship was competed for you know why but it's been a brilliant season this year. A fierce battle between Sean Gould, Alex Summers, and Wallace Mingis. 1.93, incredible off the start. What is it, a bridge 104? The immaculate line through Tories. Exactly the right apex, two thirds of the way around the corner. Brilliant driving. Now looked after by Tom New down in Southampton. Whereas Wallace commutes from Scotland down for all these hill climbs. Lovely exit from the S's. It's quick. 35.69. Just under two tenths outside the hill record. Wow. We've got a treat to look forward to tomorrow, I'm sure. Here's Steve Owen showing with Lynn in the Works OMS 28 with its 2.7 litre V8 engine. No dramas for Steve. Neat and tidy through S's, slightly oversteery on acceleration out of the front, out of the last S top Tom Road corner, and it's a 40.21. Simon Andrews in the MS28 with the 2.8 litre TKD engine. Sharing course with Bernard Cavill. Should be round about the 40 second mark, I guess. Yeah, 40.44, 40.44. So those are our runners in the top racing car class. Now we've got our classics. Kicked off by Richard George in this lovely Chevron B19. Came from Switzerland, it was part of the Eggenberger team. With its unique Cosworth FVD engine, which is actually an FVC, bored out from 800cc to two liters. Richard has shared this car with his daughter Amanda for many a year. Always competitive, always immaculately prepared. And Richard George finishes with a time of 49.43. Here's Richard Brown talking about Richard earlier as the longtime record holder at Chelsea Walsh. But for many years, he and his sons have competed in this Mark 17 Malak. So he's not going to break any records, but he, he and they have lots of fun in this early-ish Malak, Malak Clubman's car with its classic uh, 1700 <laughs> pushrod engine. He's followed by Joe McCrell in the Tigger. Super Ford with its 1600 Peugeot engine. They're having fun as well in this car. It's 
never going to win very much, but it's going to win a lot of fun for them. Easy car to run, beautiful handling. Tigger produce a lot of single-seater racing cars, but were probably more known for their um, the more cars, C cars. Tim Ganley. Joe McCrell, 48.08. What am I talking about? How Tim and Howden Ganley. Tim Schenk and Howden Ganley, Tigger. Tom Druitt, I wonder if you're, we're related, watching from Poland. Well, I hope you're enjoying summer in Poland. Nice smiley face, thanks Tom. Hello from Bristol, watching F1 qualifying and Prescott. Well, which is the most exciting to watch? I wonder, best weekend, thanks guys. Lulu Tupu. We've got a bit of a pause of the action on the hill. I'll find out what's going on. So we've got three more cars to have their first, their second practice runs, and they are all double driven cars, so a bit of time to swap drivers, swap seats. They'll be appearing in a little while. Then we're going to have a, a short break while we send a water truck up the hill for our thirsty marshals. And then we'll be back again with our competition runs by the Ferraris and the competitors in the, in the New Barn Championship. But in the meantime, here's Amanda in the Chevron. Proudly saying on the side of it, owned by Joe Siffert, driven by Gerard LaRousse. Joe Siffert, the lovely Swiss Grand Prix driver who tragically lost his life at Brands Hatch. He was a lovely guy and a brilliant driver, as is Amanda, who hustles the Chevron off the line in 2.22, which is a very quick 64 foot time. Chevron celebrated for cars that have beautiful handling the B8, the B16, B19. Then tragically, Dick, Dick Bennett's died, didn't he? Who um, started and ran Chevron in Lancashire. So Richard did a 49.43 and Amanda does a 48.44. So at the moment, Richard's doing the washing up tonight.
We are probably waiting for Tom Brown. Yeah, we're, we're waiting for Tom Brown, who's sharing the Malak with his dad, Richard. And I think uh, Robin Johnson, we haven't seen. We've seen Joe McCrell in the Tigger, but we've got to see Robin Johnson. So we're waiting for Robin and Tom to emerge. Keith Weeks just tuned in. I missed that. Sorry, Keith. Just caught the back. Here we are. Great to see Will back, isn't it? I think that's absolutely right. And he had a great uh, practice run just now. I hope you saw it. Meanwhile, here comes Tom Brown in the Malak. Last time that Malak was here, the differential exploded on the start line which is a bit embarrassing and spread a trail of oil. But uh, they were very fortunate that they could find a quick replacement and they were back for the following meeting. Tom off the line. 2.14 is a very good 64 feet time. 70 miles an hour, 75 through the speed trap and bridge. Great farming family down in uh, Berkshire. to get um, quite a full class of Clubman's cars but they mostly have disappeared from the hills I think a lot of them are still on the circuits in Malax 45.25 for Tom here's Robin Johnson sharing the ticket with Joe McCrell Joe's time in this car was a 48.08 but Robin and Joe just enjoying their season's hill climbing in this neat little car. Tom's time 45.25 as against the 47.36 of his dad. So there'll be a bit of crowing there. But remember it's only practice. Robin, 47.39. 47.39. We're going to take a slight break. I'll take a breather, and our hard-working marshals are going to get a well-deserved drink of water. I hasten to add. Sean, it's really been a revolution the, in the hill climb cars in the last five years, led by you and your dad. Mm -hmm. um, ultra lightweight, really stiff tub, and a big powerful engine um, let's have a look at this particular car because the uh, for me the amazing thing about the GR 59 is a it's lightweight B the stiffness of the tub and I think you were telling me that although the tub is effect effectively looks like one piece it's three different it's three carbon different. fiber components yes it is it's three sections and the reason for doing that was a so that we could use different materials um, and B that we could change each section of the chassis without retooling the whole car so this has got a Judd engine in you know the, the other cars uh, similar cars have got different engines so it doesn't limit you then you, you don't have to make a complete new mold right to change the, the bit that gets changed in the yeah and you've got a four litre Judd with F1 history no with uh, uh, Le Mans history I guess yeah, I, I suppose it's got Le Mans history I mean I don't know what it is it's just an old engine that's been rehacked <laughs> to, to to make it into something usable for for, for for this this formula but the amazing thing four litres nevertheless it's a tiny engine it's a nice lightweight yes it is quite a light engine I think it's comparable with the XB uh, you know the similar engine that uh, Nicholson McLaren's used for years yes. so it's about a similar weight to that sure. um, and it's it's very similar horsepower, I think. Believe I, I, people say it's 700 horsepower. It's about 640, 650 horsepower. 
It's enough, isn't it? Yeah, it's enough. Enough yeah. to be going on with. But it's got quite a lot, lot of torque and a good rev band. Yeah. So, um, you know. Am I right in saying you took this to a runway somewhere? And zero to 185 in how many seconds? Oh, I don't know how many seconds it was, but probably about, about seven. About seven <laughs> seconds, something like that. Yeah. I didn't actually time it. I, I just know that by halfway down the runway, I was sat on the rev limit at 195. Wow. Yeah. So in terms of acceleration up to, um, up to say, 150, it's as quick as an F1 car? I would say it's as quick as an F1 car yeah. to, that, to that stage. Yeah. And if it's dry, your own record might, be, might tumble? Who knows? Who knows? I've, I've got no idea, really. No. I maybe got lucky when I did that run. I don't know. It's, you just never know, yeah. to be honest. There's tyres, you know, track conditions, yeah. temperature and everything, really. And, and the want to do it, really. Sean, have a great weekend. OK, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you.
really been a revolution. The in the Okay, we're back in action on the hill with our Ferraris. Remember, they're competing in the Ferrari Owners Club Championship, sponsored by Pirelli. And our first runner is John Swift in the F355 Berlinetta, the first of the V8s to have uh, the five valves per cylinder, three and a half liters. Revving, well, I think the red line was at eight and a half, making that lovely V8 five valve noise. <clears throat> and I've got a note of the current standings in the championship. Yes, David Snelson is leading at the moment, and in second place is Pauline Goodwin. Uh, remember, there's a handicap system based on the age of the car. Where's John Swift? He's into the S's. And finishes with a 57.45. Richard Priest in a more modern 3.6 liter F360. 63 miles an hour, a bit quicker through the bridge speed trap. Should get this car up Prescott in the low 50s. the low 50s with a 52.35 John Kennedy in an even yet even younger rear end uh, in, in an even younger Ferrari this is the front engine one with a 4.3 liter V8 F430 sad in a way that the days of the classic V12 Ferrari have gone but um, they did push out quite a lot of carbon, carbon dioxide much softer suspension nice touring Ferrari lovely with flashes going and a time of 51.43, that's good time. Now Pauline, lying second in the championship in her 328, 3.2 liters. Classic. Rear engine 308, 3T, 328. Body work, much prettier than the earlier which was the Ferrari with the Italian one with two little seats at the back. Pulling smoothly out of the S's. And again, this will be in the mid-50s. Fifty-five, eight, eight, three, sixty. Spider of Mark Wibbly. It doesn't sound like a V8. I think it's a flat crank, of course. So effectively, it's two four cylinders. So it doesn't sound like an American car. Three, sixty. Spider. And uh, sensible to run with the hood up for aerodynamic reasons. If you have the hood down, there's a lot more drag, which does slow the car down markedly. by David Snelson leading this championship in his S430 beautifully controlled start not a trace of wheel spin S430 
presumably a similar engine to the F430 of John Kennedy. Good run, Nick Taylor. Fearsome, 430 coupe. Proper gearbox and clutch, not um, paddle shift. Round semicircle, similarly for Nick Taylor in for Brian Jackson in the 308 GTB. 308 was the first version with this body shape. And there was, of course, a, three, a GTS, which was the sort of soft top version, it had a hatch that you could. And Martin Jones is our last of our Ferraris. He's racing Prescott with the, the lovely lines of their bodywork. Time for Martin Jones is coming up. Time for Brian Jackson, 54.81. We've got a Mini on the line, which means we're heading for competitors in the New Barn Championship. So remember, these are competitive competitive runs, they're not in practice runs. And it's Christie and his Cooper S. Martin Jones heads for the finish. Will it be under 60 seconds? Not quite. He's taking it fairly easy. 63.72. Christie, Mini Cooper S. 1600. I don't know if it's the supercharged version. Another a lot of dust kicked up. I'm not sure if we'll need some sweeping. Probably not. It didn't look too bad. It's a car from 2007. So it will be. Yeah, it'll be the blown, the blown Cooper S. And it's times of 53.53. 53.53. 53. And he's followed by Colin Davis with the ST2 Fiesta. Just a reminder that the New Barn Championship is currently led by Ian Beattie, the Toyota MR2. And uh, if you've just switched on, these are cars competing in the New Barn Championship for inter-club license holders. What does that mean? Well, when you start hill climbing, you get what we used to call a B license, but now it's called an inter-club license, um, which limits you to the events that you can enter. But if you um, compete successfully in six events and uh, take the trouble of getting Clark of the Course to sign your license, you can upgrade to a national license. And that gives you an opportunity to enter for a broader range of top class hill clubs. Not that this one isn't a top class, but you know what I mean. So Richard Godwin with the automatic box in his Mini Cooper S records a 57.65. What can James Fletcher do in the little rinky-dink little uh, Fiat Abarth 500 SS Cinquecento modified by, by Abarth? Carlo Abarth, do you remember? He was a wizard at, at extracting lots of power from little Fiat engines and um, built his own series of cars for many years. And the SS finishes with a 54.07. Now we've got Stephen Cooper, 
turbocharged Porsche 924. of the mall. And uh, Porsche gave it to him, he still got it. He records a 5285 and he's followed by Dominic Morland. 1600 Caterham Super Sport. Dominic going fine. And he's followed by the lovely little Janetta of John Brunner. Dominic in the Caterham, 56 to 4. What can John Brunner do? Two litre engine in this little G20. success story under the leadership of Lawrence Tomlinson with their three or four series of um, Ginetta race cars including the Ginetta Juniors for young people age 14 or over but in the meantime we've got Mike Tower in the two litre BMW Z4. Wide entry into the Tom Rope corner. Followed by Richard Durrant in the Triumph TR4A. Famous TR4 with its uh, <coughs> removable roof. Removable rear windscreen. So effectively a sorry with without the fringe on top. Mike Tower in the BMW 59.77. TR4 followed by the TR5 and TR6. They were the sports cars with separate chassis then along came the TR7 with its controversial body shape and monocoque chassis but Richard Durrant has finished with a 61.94 George Tower in the 2 litre Cooper S So it's a great way to start hill climbing, get an interclub license, get a little hot hatch or a Caterham or a Westfield and you can have a go at hill climbing and if you're determined and good you can climb up the classes until you're battling with Sean Gould for the record. Andrew Meredith in the Porsche 924. Time for George Tower, 57.73 in the Mini. Andrew finishes with the 59.75. Here's Rob Guttridge, who ran, won an award for last year's championship in his Mazda. MX-5 actually a sensible choice to uh, enter into this championship because you can drive to the meeting, have a lot of fun, hill climbing it, then drive home.
Rob Gartridge, what's his time? It's a 62.34. I'm sure there's a very complex handicap system. Don't ask me to explain it. Couple more <coughs> MX fires. This one, no war. Under the 60 second mark. Yeah, 5901. Followed by John White. Car from 2008, two litre version. It's funny, on the later versions, the latest versions, some of the journalists prefer the 1600 version to, to the two litre. It's not quite as quick, but uh, they say it's more agile just as much fun if not more. John White's Mazda is followed by an increase in the two litre Alpha Spider. Here he comes. Nice little cars. Nice handling with the two litre engine. Some of them had the three litre V6 engine which made them made them make a nice noise and go quickly, but a little bit ponderous in the handling department. No war, time 59.01, John White's time 61.87, Ian Priest with us now in the S's, and next up will be David Rose, who's a LAN, recorded I think the fastest time in this class on his first run, here he is. Just keep an eye on Ian Priest's time in the Alpha while watching this lovely hot top notice to land. 62.05 for Ian Priest. Got, uh, he's fixed his uh, Lotus to land headlights. The standard ones blinked up and down, or didn't, as the case may be. Often they just winked at you one of them and decided not to play ball. But revolutionary, the land in terms of the way it handled. Soft suspension, lovely handling. 52.03. Ian Winnie in the MX5. Last time, Ian got his second at Prescott, second place in the championship at Prescott. He beat his handicap by 3.21 seconds, which was quite an achievement. Only matched by Zoe Sherman, who beat her handicap. She, she won at Prescott by beating her handicap by three and a half seconds. So I expect both of them. Penalised. Meanwhile, we're looking at Will Goff in the lovely Alpha 4C. 1.8 litre turbocharged all aluminium engine. All carbon fibre. Fifty-three point seven for Will. Equal fun, the little Suzuki Swift Sport. Tim Stokes on board. Here's the Suzuki. He's followed by David Keeling in a Vauxhall powered Westfield. We'll see him soon. Here he is. An elaborate roll cage that they designed for cage racing. And the Suzuki is finished with a 5802. It's David Keeling rounding part. Like 
going out to the first left-hander of the S's. Oversteers a bit out of the Tom Rote corner and heads for semicircle. He's followed by Stephen Sims in a two-litre clear. in and out of Tom Rowe corner. Martin Rawson off the line in his MR2. The latest version of the MR2, which has been uh, around for a long time. Not many of the Mark I MR2 survived the dreaded rust. If you speak French, you'll know why the MR2 had to have a different name in France. Time for Stephen Sims, 54-7-1. That was the Renault Clio, of course. What can Martin Rawson do? It, can he beat 60 seconds? Might just. Not quite, 60.26. Here's a rare car, this is now rare, the Honda CRX, 1.6 litres, very popular. What would that be, 20 years ago? Maybe a little more, not many left. Good fun car. And uh, probably, you find a nice one. Well, Honda, fabled for their reliability, if you find one that hasn't rusted away, you have lots of fun for probably under a grand. So Martin having lots of fun around semi-circle. And records a good time, 54.7. Eight. Here's the Puma. Point seven. There was a Puma Sport, wasn't there? They were all metallic blue, slightly wider track, and I think they were quite rare, so probably a future classic. On the start line, Sean West. In another MX-5, it's definitely the car to have, isn't it? Meanwhile, the Puma. Finishes with a 58.27. Here's the two-liter MX-5 of Sean West. Be 11 years old. This one. So nicely run in. As opposed to Steve Perry's on the line, which is, I think, P Reg, which is, of course, P about 1995 ish. Sean, 5307. Steve Perry in the early MX-5. Someone's attacked it in Tesco's car park. Got a bit of a dent in the side. Early MX-5. That had blinking headlights, but they worked. I don't think they relied on vacuum. Porsche Cayman, Alan McFarlane. 
Came an S with the 3.4 litre flat six engine. Lovely. I think my favourite port. Not easy to get at the mechanics, of course, mid engine. Steve Perry's time 59.59. 59.59. Here's Zoe Sherman, and Zoe won her class at Prescott a couple of weeks ago by beating the handicappers by quite a margin. So I suspect she will have been re-handicapped for this meeting. Just a reminder that uh, the class is being led by Ian Beatty at the moment in his MR2. Uh, followed by James Dockery in the fearsome Subaru that we will see pretty soon because he's waiting on the pre-start line at the moment. So Zoe runs semicircle. Chris D again in a Cooper S from uh, 1997. 2007, I beg his pardon. So, blown 1600 engine, I think the engine built in Mexico, the early, early Cooper S's time, 52.59, that's a good time. Paul Rennison, overall champ in this championship last year in the RDTT. He doesn't feature, yeah, he's in third place in the championship standings so far this year some uh, 18 or so points behind the leader in beating off the line goes James Dockery in the fearsome Subaru we'll see in a minute meantime the Audi TT of Paul Renison hits for the finish and it's a low 50s, 53.65. Here's James Dockery, who's only two points behind Ian Beatty for the lead of the championship. Ian in the, the MR2, so it's a question of how much you can beat the handicappers by. What can James do in the Subaru? Can he get under the 52nd mark? Yes, 49.59, great run by James Dockery. What can Sarah do sharing the Fiesta ST2? So there are nine rounds in this championship throughout the season and your best six scores count. So Sarah, I don't know if that'll be one of her best scores, 57.35. Is the last runner in this class. So our last competitive run of the day So when the handica handicappers have uh, finished fingering their computers, we will find out at the next meeting whether Ian Beatty maintains his lead. But I don't think Ian has had a second run. But in the meantime, 
Up to the line comes one of the Alexanders. Is it Dad or is it Son? I'm not sure. 880. Let's have a look. This is a a first practice run. Do you remember this car withdrew from the line with a This is Richard Alexander with a technical problem, but I'm glad to say they fixed it. That's great. 2.26 off the line for Richard. And at 88 through the bridge trap. Good run. This is in the fourth PC. Force in Staffordshire, run by Ian Dason. It's been revolutionary in the last 10 years or so. The the rise of these small manu specialist manufacturers of hill climb cars. Of course, it's not their only business. Gould make uh, very high quality parts for Formula One team, which are 40.49. Um, DJ make carbon fiber parts for racing bicycles, racing cycles. So they've all got different um, bread and butter things to make and things to do but um, producing a new hill climb car every now and then is icing on the cake and um, I think Sean told me, Sean Gould told me that there are one or two new ones coming through for next season which is great news. So now we go right through the whole program again with cars taking their second practice runs. Remember, these are competitors in the British Hill Climb Championship, the British Hill Climb Cup, and the Midland Hill Climb Championship. British, of course, is decided on the results of the top 12 runoff at the end at the, well, of which there are two runs in the championship meeting. In other words, tomorrow we'll have two top 12 runoffs where people score points for the British Hill Climb Championship. So, I've just heard that um, that is the end of our runs for today. Um, so, all the competitors in the British Hill Climb Championship have had one, and the Midland Championship, have had one practice run today. We've got a very large entry. Uh, oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah, they've had two runs today. Um, they were going up the hill before we started the live stream at 11 o'clock. So people have had their share of practice. Tomorrow, again, we have a full day of competition in the British Hill Climb Championship, the Midland Championship, and the British Hill Climb Cup. So a nice early finish. Sun is shining. Let's pray that it's as nice if not, not nicer tomorrow and we kick off our live stream at 11 o'clock tomorrow I think British Hill Climb Championship contenders will be able to have a third practice run tomorrow morning but our competition runs are going to start at 11 o'clock so if you're not here in person do switch on again tomorrow from 11 o'clock and we'll be live streaming right the way through the day. Thanks for watching today. Thank you if you've come today. Thank you to our organizing team, our marshals, Richard Danby who sets up and uh, has made a fantastic job of the live stream all through the season, and Steve who's been on the camera. 
This is Chris Druitt saying thanks for watching and we'll talk to you again tomorrow.